But at the same time, if you look at uh, still the same booklet, you will see that Timor-Leste has the highest surplus in the world of, but of uh, <coughs> balance of payment against GDP. It says here almost 300% surplus against GDP, while the United States, at least for once, came lowest, has a, the largest deficit in the world. I'm pleased that at least in few things we're able to beat the United States. But does that mean that uh, having the largest, the highest surplus in the world with significant oil and gas revenues every month, significant for us, minute when compared with uh, Kuwait, for instance, or Qatar, but for us is significant revenue, average of 200 million a month that pour into our coffers. And yet, if you travel around the country, eight years after independence, most of our people are still extremely poor. So oil and gas resources, revenues, unfortunately do not translate automatically into improvement in the lives of the people. The work for peace takes time. Town, village by village, town by town, we build the building blocks of peace. The work towards eliminating poverty also, there is no shortcut in that. Oil and gas revenues do not make miracles. They are extremely important, and I hope that Cambodia also soon will harvest millions of dollars from oil and gas, but at the end of the day, at the end of the year, we have to see whether these revenues have contributed towards lift lifting the living standards of the people. In my country, we have established a petroleum fund in 2004. We became independent only in 2002. In 2002, we signed a treaty with Australia because we share some of the oil and gas revenues in the Timor Sea. It was a constructive uh, uh, negotiation that we had we managed to acquire 90% of the revenues in one large oil and gas field, 10% to Australia. We signed the agreement on May 20, 2002, exactly the day of our independence. Revenues began to flow in 2004, 2005, only with $100 million, a bit over $100 million, we created, approved the petroleum law, and created the petroleum fund. The first deposit in the petroleum fund was a bit over $100 million. With the petroleum law and the petroleum fund, all the oil and gas revenues go to that fund. It doesn't go to the Ministry of Finance, to our Treasury. It goes to the petroleum fund that is managed by our central bank. It is our central bank that informs the parliament and the government what is the sustainable level allowed by law. The law allows us to only use 3% of the oil and gas revenues in the petroleum fund to support our budget requirements. The law is flexible, allow extra money if necessary, but the government has to present to the parliament projects in a convincing manner to be scrutinized by the parliament for the parliament to allow any use of money beyond the 3% of sustainable level. So it is not the government that says how much is sustainable. It is the central bank that says how much money is in the petroleum fund, how much interest we have earned from our investment in U.S. Treasury bonds, so how much is sustainable? Not beyond the 3%. Because of our current development needs, we actually have not needed to use beyond the 3%.
anything beyond the 3% would have not been able to be absorbed by our economy. Or governments, our government, the ministries, do not have the capacity to execute the programs of each ministry beyond the monies that are already allocated. However, right now at this very moment that I speak here, our Prime Minister, Mr. Sanana Guzman, a former guerrilla fighter, prisoner, poet, painter, photographer, he actually, his photographs are actually pretty bad. Uh, I compete with him on photography and I always win. But he is a great individual, human being, who went through every stage of a person's life. From a schoolboy, athlete, guerrilla fighter, captured, put in prison seven years, but then led the process of reconciliation with Indonesia, first president of our country, in 2007, he decided to resign as, as president. He preferred to be prime minister and ran, set up his own political party. Now he leads a coalition of five parties. Right now, he's crisscrossing the country, visiting every town, every district and sub-district, sharing with the people our national strategic development plan, a 20-year development plan with one-year targets, 5, 10, and 20. What is our vision by 2030? Timor-Leste would have a transition from subsistence agriculture to modern agriculture. Timor-Leste would have transition from extreme poverty to a high middle income country. Timor-Leste would have a transition from high levels of illiteracy to complete literacy, having invested seriously in education and health. We would have eliminated malaria, malnutrition, and all other preventable diseases. At the same time, continuing to foster rule of law, culture of tolerance, of inclusion, non-discrimination, gender e e equality, and democracy. This is our vision, this is our commitment. Will we able to succeed? Will we su succeed? I don't know. Depends on the future generations. We are building the foundations of a modern democratic state, but we are handing over to the new generation. I'm not saying that we, the generation that fought for independence, that today rule or misrule the country. Some say we misrule. That is also a fair accusation. It's part of our very dynamic democracy. Will the new generation be able to continue or improve on our work in the next 5, 10, 20 years to come so that by 2030 we have uh, extricate our people from extreme poverty? A few years ago, when we had to make the decision about where to invest our petroleum revenues, the decision was made to invest in U.S. Treasury bonds. <clears throat> some of you, brilliant economists, professors, some, I believe, having already acquired master's degrees in uh, business administration, in investment, probably would have advised us a few years ago, some would have advised, don't put in U.S. Treasury bonds because the yield the interest is very low. You should invest in other equities in Wall Street where the return is 8-10%. Fortunately, 
none of us at the time knew Mr. Bernard Madoff. I don't know if you know of Mr. Bernard Madoff. Had we known him, I lived many years in New York. I'm glad I never ran into him. Had I run into him, he would have charmed me into convincing us to hand over the money to him because he would guarantee us 8%, 10% return, where our petroleum fund would have disappeared a year ago, together with many other countries that invested around the world in mid to high risk portfolios. Even Norway. Norway was a country that advised us most on our petroleum law and petroleum fund. And yet Norway lost billions of dollars in its investments in uh, portfolios around the world. Many other countries, we did not. The law allowed us to put 90% in petroleum fund, in uh, US Treasury bonds, 10% wherever the government decide to invest. But we thought, more prudent, let it all stay in the US Treasury bonds. Because we didn't have the experience, human resources, to manage these investments. Could we just trust to a uh, fund manager? You give your money to a fund manager somewhere in New York or in London or in Singapore, and you don't know much because you don't have people in, on the ground to monitor the markets. And these fund managers have uh, hundreds of clients. They are not managing only your little account. And you wake up one morning, you are told you lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, we decide not to gamble. But are we going to continue to keep the U.S. money in U.S. Treasury bonds? A, I never received a letter from President Barack Obama thanking us for supporting the U.S. economy with our money U.S. Treasury bonds. Today, I think it's China and Timor-Leste that is most funding U.S. debt. I told friends in the U.S. Congress about a year ago when I was invited there for a morning breakfast with members of Senate and House, I said, you people should give me a Congressional Medal of Honor because it's Timor-Leste and uh, China that's financing your debt. They said they will consider it. I'm still waiting. Well, it is humor. Uh, we have benefited from that in investing in the safe U.S. Treasury bonds. But there is debate in our country now.